We're going to scout some players today. We got Brian Smith with us. He'll tell us about um, a TCU D line commit and maybe what type of characteristics they're looking for in the future of this defense. We'll talk about that next on Lockdown Horn Frogs. <laughs> You are Locked On Horn Frogs, your daily podcast on the TCU Horn Frogs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Is your team every day? You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, find us on various audio platforms. We're now available on the SiriusXM app. That the entire Locked On Network is. So that's an exciting new feature. That we have, and we have with us uh, Brian Smith. If you want to follow him on Twitter, it's at FBScout underscore Florida, our recruiting insider um, here at the Lockdown Network. And Brian, I, I sent a few notes to you. So TCU landed a defensive lineman a few weeks back. His name is Travis Jackson um, out of Tyler, Texas, East Texas kid. When you turned on the film, what did you see from him uh, that impressed you or that stood out when you got to watch him play? He kind of fits the profile of what teams want on the edge. I mean, he can play in a power position at, in time. He, he can grow into his frame more, but he's a guy that you can bring off the edge. He can be a four eye. He could be a five, whatever. But most importantly here, let's, let's keep it very, very simple. Alabama offered him recently. That puts mm-hmm. things in perspective. Right. Um, he plays at a, in an area that is famous for high school football and Tyler. And that's an area that, Quite honestly, Alabama recruits every year. So when they offered him, it kind of gave him a little more of a solidified look on the recruiting Mm -hmm. rankings. I can guarantee you he will go up because of that Alabama offer. But this is the difference between winning and losing in big games. It's Mm -hmm. just my my dude is better than yours. He has tremendous upside. Yeah, something you told us last week that I'd just like to get you to expand a little bit more. You said on offense, you can scheme things up you know, to a certain extent, like if you have limitations, you can sort of find ways to get around that. What is it about playing defense that really makes it more just mano a mano? Like I have to beat my man and and win my matchup on a weekly basis. Look at it this way. When the ball is snapped, let's say it's a passing play. The wide receiver knows what his route is. Mm -hmm. The cornerback does not. You're in trail. More or less. Right you got to have elite speed to make up for it. You've got to have technique and all that stuff. But you can't teach length, can't teach height, and that's why it's very difficult. Same with D-line. They try to do everything they can to fool you anyway with pulling guards one way and running a buck sweep the other direction, et cetera. But you're going to be behind because they know where it's going and you don't. Can't teach speed, can't teach strength. It, it's just raw physical ability. So, And you also need numbers with that. Um that, that comment's been made by a lot of people. Uh, Brian Kelly made that when he was at Notre Dame, talking about how they needed to change their program and all that. And, you know, they, they, they build it through a lot of numbers on defense for Notre Dame. And that's what the SEC and the Big 12 and everybody's tried to do. You're not going to just stop like a Gundy offense at Oklahoma State. I get that. You're not going to stop TCU's offense under a, a guy like Dykes. But you at least got to have a play every now and then that's just about your dude has the freakish speed or size or strength to bust through and get a tackle for loss. Mm -hmm. You're not going to out scheme because they know where the ball's going. So I I think this is the kind of kid we're just talking about, the the young man that's going to be going to TCU from Tyler Legacy. That's somebody that can do that. You need as many of them as you can possibly get to offset all the offensive advantages with the spread and stuff. Another thing I wanted to touch on, uh, so this will be year two for TCU with Joe Gillespie as their defensive coordinator. He came over from Tulsa. He runs a 3-3-5. I know there's a lot of different variations of that at this point. It's kind of popular, especially in Big 12 country with the three down front. Um, They've really been aggressive with defensive linemen recruiting. I know on a basic level, you sort of want to get bigger, especially in the middle. But what is, when you go to a three down front, transitioning from a four-man front, what kind of characteristics are you looking for on the recruiting trail when you're scouting out defensive linemen? This this is a very complex topic overall because when traditional football people hear three-man line, they just think of massive two-gap D linemen. Mm-hmm. The 3-3-5 three, three, is based totally different because some of these guys will even stand up at times. 
They'll take a defensive edge guy that's a two-point stance guy, and they're moving back to linebacker. There's just shifting parts. It is the closest thing to what we just talked about in the prior moment with defense trying to dictate to offense. It's one thing to line the same players up in the huddle that you had the last five plays, but where they line up during the play is different. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to confuse people. Uh, a defensive lineman that has versatility to play the nose spot or one of the DNs but can still shoot a gap, that's that's what the 3-3-5s try to do. It's, it's not the traditional just stay in front of your guy, wall it off, and everybody rally to the ball. It's pretty boring, but the traditional 3-4 defense like Bill Parcells ran and Saban's run, this is different. It's a one gap and go. You still need some size, but it's usually one gap and go and guys that can play multiple spots. It, it's a moving defense. Okay. Uh, transitioning to the offensive line. So Colin Deary, he's a transfer from Maryland. Um, looked like he was going to be there for the Terps this year, but he ends up committing to TCU. Uh, they have some question marks at center. Uh, what have you seen from this young man, and, and why do you think the coaching staff was excited about him? He was pr- supposed to be the starter for Maryland. And it, it is – I don't know what's going on there. That program always seems to be in flux. <laughs> but he's a kid that was good enough to start in the Big Ten. So let's, let's begin with that. Big Ten football is really known for its power play. And Maryland's offense has been pretty decent here recently. So that's a good sign. More importantly, they're getting a kid all the way from the DMV, which tells me that TCU's title run, you know, they go all the way to the championship game against Georgia. Do you really think they would have gotten that kid – if they hadn't gone, I don't No, You know, this, this is to me more than, and I'm not picking on the kid. It doesn't matter what position or what his ranking is. TCU now has some clout. Let's not forget that they they've never recruited the East coast to my, to my knowledge in any no, kind yeah. of capacity. So that's important. They've also got a guy that you can plug in and play at a spot that quite honestly is a pain playing center in today's world. Somebody has got some experience at it that they know can play at the Big Ten level means you can play at the Big 12 level. Mm -hmm. They don't have to just throw somebody in there at the spot that gets the ball to your quarterback. So he has the size, he has experience. This is the kind of guy that can change your offense because he can make all the checks and all that, and you're not worried about turnovers and stupid mistakes up front. Big pickup for the Frogs. I got a couple more questions for Brian. I do want to quickly mention FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash lockdown. You can go there and place bets today. NBA Finals start tonight between the uh, Heat and the Nuggets. They are the official um, booking partner of the NBA. They also have a safe, secure, and easy-to-use app. You can just bet on the money line, or if you're more experienced, you can do parlays. You can do a lot of different prop bets. NHL, Stanley Cup Finals coming up as well. Major League Baseball in full swing. FanDuel.com slash lockdown or you can use their safe and secure app. Plenty of ways uh, to try to make some money, which is – that's what we're all interested in, right, Brian? We all want to make some cash. <laughs> I certainly do. I absolutely <laughs> do. I do as well. Uh, so sticking with Colin, I just want to ask you about that center position. How different is that from the rest of the offensive line? Because I know, like, you want to get your best five on the field. We talk about position flex and how that's important. But aside from just snapping the ball, I know you mentioned – you know, checks, like recognizing blitzes. What what are all the different responsibilities the center's trying to handle, you know, in, in a given play? Trying to make sure the guys around you are doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. That's where it gets really awkward. If, if you think about O-line from a big picture perspective, it's five massive human beings trying to do the same thing. That within itself doesn't sound very comfortable, but that's what it is. <laughs> they all have to be on the same page. So, there has to be a leader of it. And it's usually the center, sometimes a guard, especially if it's like a fifth-year senior, will make line calls. But the center is going to be involved with it. And they have to make sure that the slides are right. And with all these, like we were just talking about the 3-3-5, three, three, the whole point of that is to try to get that guy to screw up mm-hmm. so they get somebody that comes free. Because right. they know that this defense that's now in bow, like you said, in the Big 12, it is based on the fact they know the teams are going to score. we got to hit some big plays defensively, too. And if you've got an experienced center and hopefully some other guys up front, you can offset that. It, it's the chess match. It's the chess match. So the center is where it starts. And if you're good there, you look at teams like the, the sack totals by the NCAA rankings and all that, I'll bet you money the teams that finish in the top 10 almost always have a returning starter at center. It's, mm. it's going to be rare because that, that spot is so important. Why is it so tough as someone who scouts this, 
to project, especially O linemen at the next level. I know some positions you can sort of see it pretty clearly. Um, is it just the 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 mass and the size and in, in trying to see how those guys might fill out their frame? Why is that kind of a hit or miss position as far as trying to find the right players and what they might do at the college level? A buddy of mine once told me one one of the best lines I've heard in football. He said offensive linemen aren't born, they are made. And what that's about is there's a lot of people big enough to play offensive line, but how many of them can work together with those other four players, can understand checks, and can go through the gazillion different technical things that you need to do and do it at a moment's notice against somebody that's not very friendly that's standing in front of them. Oh, line training, I got a buddy that does it. It is incredibly complex. So most of the stuff that's important is something I can't grade literally, because I can't see inside your head. How do you mature? Who you go to work with? There's just variables beyond control with O-line. So I hate O-line evaluations with every fiber of my being. (laughs) And it's by far the hardest, especially interior O-line. The film's usually not very easy to grade because you get a lot of side angles and don't see it too. But yeah, it's above the shoulders, man. Uh, There are a ton of guys that weigh 330 pounds that are 6'5", but how many of them can move and go where they need to play after play? That's the question. He's Brian Smith, again, at FB Scout underscore Florida. Uh, Brian, if people follow you on YouTube or uh, on your Twitter page, what can they expect from uh, from your work there? Uh, this month in particular that we're getting ready to start is what I would like to call my time. It is the month of June. It's the busiest month of the year. It's going to be a lot of random recruiting stuff going on. Uh, I live in Florida, but I, I cover all the way to California. It could be anything that you can imagine about a kid committing to any school (laughs) and a reason they did, why they did a photo, a video of a kid that committed, whatever. I have a lot of different insights on it and uh, it's fun, man. Just the little bits that come through. I can, I can release a lot of it on on social media. Some hints sometimes with things that are going on. That's what we're here for, man. Let's, let's be entertained. I love it. Let's be entertained. And this is locked on horn frogs. Again, he's Brian Smith. We appreciate him being on today. It's your team every day.